Boom! What's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson. Welcome back to Sales Funnel Radio. And today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about a really cool um, single sentence that represents how the brain experiences the sale. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt, completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. How about that for a hook, huh? <laughs> hey, so uh, what I'm gonna walk you guys through today is, um, th I actually had this realization as I was um, coaching a lot of Two Comic Club X, or Two Comic Club coaching people. It's like the first program way back in the day. And uh, it was about, uh, probably like three years ago now. And what was interesting is what I started realizing as I was coaching these people was there was a single sentence that would help people identify where their marketing was lacking. Oh, what? And I started developing this thing and I would test it. And I could see, you know, like one of the, one of the things that I was hated when I first started this game was people, you know, these gurus would say things like, you got to join the conversation that's happening inside their head. And I'd be like, okay. And that would be it, you know? And it was frustrating to me. And I didn't understand what that meant, number one. And number two, I didn't know how to do it. Like, what are you talking about? Is, are we talking like a, like a, you know, a Charles Xavier X-Men kind of thing? You join it inside their head, you know? I didn't know how to actually pull off what it was that people were talking about in that, um, with, with that light on. So um, I started coming up with this cool sentence and it actually massively, massively follows along with the vehicle, internal and external beliefs. That's actually the framework for the sentence. But what's cool is the sentence helps me figure out how sold um, somebody is. It helps me figure out how far their beliefs are, right? I don't like creating something that I can't measure. And so a lot of these frameworks and a lot of these marketing pieces I go and I create and put together, how do I measure that? Well, you're about to get the answer to that in this episode. That's the point of, of today's episode is it's not just how does the brain experience the sale. It is the sentence that runs alongside of it that helps me know these people are all stuck on external beliefs or these people, I'm joining the conversation in their head. Oh my gosh, if I was acting as my dream customer right now, they're all gonna get stuck on vehicle, right? They're gonna get stuck on this new product that I'm sharing with them or they're gonna get stuck on internal or they're gonna get stuck on external. How do I judge that? How do I figure out where they're most likely to start tripping up? And then once I do launch, how is it that I can uh, figure out and engage where they are actually tripping up? Um, it's, it, there's certain things that I'll hear them say uh, that let me know, oh my gosh, my sales message, my funnel, it's not doing this enough, right? And it, it, it's in their comments. In fact, that's one of the things that I've been doing um, as I go and I do a lot of Facebook Lives recently is I will go in and I, as I'm doing Facebook Lives, what I'm really doing a lot of times is I'm watching the comments to see reactions. And the reactions that they're giving, it's the way that they're saying things. I'm like, what? Okay, for what I'm saying right now, it looks like that person's stuck on internal in, internal based beliefs. They they think that they are not good enough to pull off what I'm showing them right now, or they don't think they have enough time, or they right. And it's the sentence that will run through my head that uh, kind of I bounce against that. So it's kind of a short episode today. We're gonna cut over. This is actually a segment taken from the last Offermind event, which again I'd love to have you guys at. And here's a blatant pitch: Everyone should come to Offermind. Go to Offermind.com. Uh, excited to have you guys. Um, the tickets are already selling, which is very exciting. Uh, we have a we have a huge event this year. It's very exciting. We have a thousand thirty eight seats, um, and uh, it's exciting. So, anyways, if you guys go to offermind.com, you can check it out. But this segment does come from last year's event, and it is me walking through not just how the brain experiences the sale, right? But you're also going to see the sentence that I will run people through, right? That I run myself through as I kind of act like my dream customer. And uh, so, anyways, let's cut over there and let's help you guys understand your customer more. Yeah, everyone's hands should be up. Let me try that again. <laughs> okay. Where's all my salespeople in the room? Woo! Yeah! Right? You're all salespeople. All of you salespeople. So my question then is, do people always buy the moment they see your product? No. What? But I thought your product was the best. I thought it was amazing. I thought you had a really, really good product. So why don't they actually buy? Oh, this is where it starts to get good, my friends. Why don't they buy? There's no content. There's no stories. 
I got last few questions before I buy, man. They think that's the reason that they're not buying, but. The belief, yeah, what's, your, what's the ROI on your products? <laughs> exactly. Crazy lady. Oh, man. I love you if you see this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why don't they buy, though? Okay, this is the reason why. Okay, I love the movie The Croods. <laughs> Remember at the beginning of that? He's like, one day they saw something new and died. <laughs> you remember that? It has everything to do with that. It's the same psychology. It's so funny to me that they play it off of that. Because anytime anything new pops up, right, we start to go into crap mode. Oh my gosh, is it new? Right? We kind of went through that just a little bit before. We start to run all these red flags. Okay? There's a great book called Pitch Anything, one of my favorites. Uh, super good book. Yeah? Oh man, the book's super good. There are three parts of the brain that you're actually talking to in a sale. The first brain you're talking to is the croc brain. So the croc brain is a picky and cognitive miser whose primary instinct is survival only, which means they are looking for ways to reject you. They don't know they're doing that, but they are actively looking for ways. People want to be included in stuff. They want to be where they're supposed to be, right? We want the togetherness feeling. That's oxytocin. We want to be around other people. We want to be accepted. We want to be where we're supposed to be. But we also don't want to, we don't want to be in places where we're not supposed to be either. Right? And so what ends up happening is I'm like, hey, sweet thing. And they're like, subconsciously start to find ways to let themselves out of the pressure of actually doing the new thing. This is like, this is such a huge deal when it comes to sales. They're looking at your thing. Who's, what product are you guys selling right now? Anyone? Again? What product? You selling software? Right, and uh, what are the major objections somebody has the moment they see your thing? Does it do what you say it does? Vehicle-based objection. Does it do what you say it does? It's vehicle, right? Then they probably go on to, my guess is something internal. Cost. Yeah, costs would be a third one. And they'll say something like, well, am, can I actually do it? Can I pull it off? Do we really have that problem? Yeah, do we really have that problem? Yeah, that's totally an internal one. <laughs> do we really have that problem in the first place? Right? And there starts to be all these little tiny objections that they're like, oh my gosh, no, I don't belong in that category, and, and, and I'm making the right decision. I'm going to protect my status because I'm not supposed to be in there, and I'll have a status increase by saying no, not yes. Okay? They're looking for a logical way to release themselves from having to move forward. Okay? After, after we get past that part of the brain, right, then we move on to like midbrain. That's what you're actually pitching to satisfy the croc brain. Then we move on to that last very part, which you think you're pitching to neocortex, right? In the, right in the back of the noggin, that's the logic, right? A lot of the logic areas. And we think that's where the sale happens. Well, it has this feature and this feature and this feature and this feature. That's us speaking to that part of the brain, thinking that's where the sale happens. They don't care. <laughs> that's not what happens to the sale go down. Okay. So the, the brain experiences the sale, right? First, like, this is, this is fascinating, okay? When you, when you think about, like, how they actually experience the sale, this is, this, I've actually figured out a way to map and measure how sold somebody is. This is powerful stuff. So how the brain experiences the sale, though, right? The possibility of product, service, working in general. What they're going to ask is, like, oh, you got this cool thing called funnels? Does it even work? They're going to question the vehicle itself. Does it even work? And if they see a possibility that it could work, they graduate to internal-based concerns. Okay? They graduate to the next level. All right? does, your, does, your, does your vehicle even work? Okay? The very next thing that they're going to say to themselves is when they actually see themselves succeeding with it individually. Oh, I see it works in general, but uh, I just can't see myself pulling it off. I get a lot of people in coaching that do that. They play that move thinking they're logi logically letting themselves out of the sale, logically letting themselves out of actually taking action. They're like, hey, I believe that what you're talking about, Stephen, yeah, it is true, but there's just no way I can pull that off. That means I sold them one third, okay? There's three things. I got them past the first hurdle. They got stuck on the second one. Okay? And I'm like, oh man, internally, oh crap. I just, I, I'm not a fit. I'm not worthy. I'm, there's no way this is actually gonna work. Okay, so is there a possibility of them doing the same? Is it possible? Yeah. Is it possible for me? Yeah. If I do that, they graduate to the third category. Okay, third category, we'll talk about those other things in a second, right? Is the possibility um, for them having enough resources on the journey? Am I going to have enough? Okay, okay, I see it's possible, Stephen. I see it's possible for me, but man, like, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time for this. 
I don't have enough money for this. I don't have enough support. Support from community, support from spouse or family. I don't have enough, right? I don't have resources for my journey. And you think about like, that's what I'm kind of drawn on the right side there. If you think about it, these customers are on a journey. And as, what they're doing is they're seeing inside of their head, they're seeing like, oh my gosh, I, I see that that's different than what I was expecting. But look what it's going to take to get there. Whew. And if you, you have to resolve that concern, it's one of the easiest ones to, to, uh, to actually resolve. Okay, internally, can they see themselves as this other person? Well, I can't see me doing that. That's why it's a little bubble with a little stick figure in there. Okay, this is like, this is a big deal. It's funny enough, like this is all I did. When I would walk out of like a coaching session and Russell would be like, dude, hey man, glad you're done. Uh, I go live in 11 minutes. Can you finish this funnel? I'd be like, oh, 11 minutes to build a funnel? Oh my gosh. In my head, I'm running through this. Okay, vehicle story. Internal-based story to change their internal beliefs about themselves. External-based story. Boom, plug into the frameworks. I'm going to grab that page from this funnel, that page from this funnel, plug and plug. Oh yeah. Hey, wish you could geek out with other real funnel builders and even ask questions while I build funnels live? Oh, <laughs> wish granted. Watch and learn funnel building as I document my process in my funnel strategy group. It's free. Just go to thescienceofselling.online and join now. 